2023 Mazda CX-5 review, serious class at a surprising price. If something feels too good to be true, it probably is. However, as much as the 2023 Mazda CX-5 might feel too good to be true, it is in fact, a real car. A real car that looks and feels way more expensive than it actually is. A real car that drives better than the vast majority of non-performance, regular commuter cars out there, crossover or otherwise. A real car for real people that's so attractive, so good that it makes you think, is this a scam? As far as I can tell, it's not a scam. Just a great freaking deal. Slotting in between the three-row midsize CX-9, a vehicle that will soon be replaced by the upcoming CX-90, and the subcompact CX-30, the Mazda CX-5 is the Hiroshima Automaker's two-row compact crossover, competing against stuff like the Toyota RAV4, Honda CR-V, Hyundai Tucson, and Volkswagen Tiguan. This generation of CX-5 may have been around since 2017, but, in my view, its design has aged gracefully. Modern car design often characterizes itself by being divisive, but evidently, nobody bothered to tell Mazda this. Aggressive yet elegant, striking but not flashy, the CX-5 is the compact crossover other compact crossovers tell their owners not to worry about. A subtle facelift in 2022 brought in a slightly different front bumper and revised head and taillight signatures while this swanky rhodium white metallic color is new for 2023. High art car design extends into the cabin. Clean, classy, decently built, and comprised of what I'd declare as the most luxurious materials in this class, the Mazda CX-5 is a pleasure to sit in. All of the buttons and switches feel nice to use, and all of the knobs are shiny and knurled. Finishes are near luxury grade, arguably even surpassing some lower ranking so-called luxury brands out there. I'm a sucker for the gray wood trim that lines the signature model and matches the floors of my apartment, while the restrained use of piano black, chrome, and subtly brown, stitched leathers are a real delight to behold. Attention to detail is high, with tiny stuff like seat adjustment switches that honestly would not look out of place at all in a Lexus or Acura product. Generous material choices extend to the back seat, too, with soft plastic adorning the tops of the doors. Even the gauges and infotainment UI are pleasantly minimalist and look very high-end. Purely on aesthetics, I think Mazda software is among the prettiest looking systems out there. The one big caveat with it, though, is that it isn't a touchscreen. Exclusively controlled by a BMW iDrive style knob complete with physical button shortcuts for the most important functions, it isn't a bad input device after a short initial learning period. I completely understand why Mazda did this, using a touchscreen while driving is generally a bad idea, but it would have been nice if the thing still reverted to a touchscreen when the car is stationary a la Genesis. Rear seats are fairly spacious for the class, with a huge space underneath the front seats that allow rear passengers to stick their feet in and really stretch out. Back seats are heated as well in Trim's Premium Plus package and up, but the buttons to control these are located in the middle seat flip-down armrest, which means you won't be able to use them when rolling with a full house. Cargo capacity is appropriately generous, with the vehicle able to accommodate a six-drawer dresser with the seats folded during testing. The CX-5's upmarket engine is a 2.5-liter turbo 4 making 227 horsepower and a more than healthy 310 pound-feet of torque on 87-octane fuel, i.e. the same amount of torque as a Honda Civic Type R. Spring for 93 octane and the CX-5 returns 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet. All-wheel drive is standard across the board, as is the 6-speed automatic, but less expensive models come with a naturally aspirated 2.5-liter making 187 horsepower and 186 pound-feet. The CX-5 being tested here is the turbocharged model, of course. As the stats suggest, it packs more than adequate acceleration for normal driving. A sport mode tells the six-speed automatic transmission to hold gears longer, maintaining higher revs, at which point the 2.5-liter indeed sounds better and burlier than the comparatively droney, almost droll 2.0s that power most of this car's rivals. Although, admittedly, that's not a very high oral bar to clear. As a commuter mill, this engine is pretty great. Extremely quiet and smooth at idle, you'd almost think it was turned off while stopped at a light.